Hello and thanks for joining us on NITV News. An Indigenous voice to Parliament has been endorsed by a joint parliamentary committee, but needs more work before going to the Australian people. While the committee's final report revives hopes for an advisory body, it recommends that a referendum should not proceed before the model is clarified and co-designed with the input of Indigenous Australians. For eight months and hundreds of inquiries and submissions later, the Joint Parliamentary Committee on Constitutional Recognition has concluded an Indigenous voice to the Parliament is not ready to go to the Australian people. I think that's very dangerous. My experience with referenda is that that would go down. Instead, in a move that will likely anger many Indigenous groups, the committee has recommended a co-design process with Indigenous Australians before holding a public vote. Something that has um, a great degree of buy-in from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, and I think that will only work if there's a proper process of co-design. Voice of the Parliament's on, on the table, the referendum's on the table, uh, the truth-telling process is on the table, and the agreement-making process on the table. The report outlines a roadmap for a successful referendum to recognise Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in the constitution, as well as an advisory body, which the last two prime ministers rejected. But if elected, Labor is promising to get things right and are committed to a First Nations voice before a vote on a republic. There'd be no one in the Labor Party that'd be saying First Nations should wait yet again for their chance to have a constitutional recognition uh, and a rightful one. But the Greens have been the only dissenting voice, saying a referendum can come before. Other bodies that are in our, in our constitution have been designed after. We see no difference for the, the voice, it's that important. Um, we think um, once First Nation peoples feel ready to go to a referendum, that we should be going to a referendum. The report also calls for a truth-telling process and the establishment of a keeping place for unknown Indigenous remains. Thousands of people are expected at a tombstone opening ceremony at Cairns Cemetery on Saturday for the eight children who tragically lost their lives in 2014. Ella Archibald Binge has more. I'm here at Murray Street in Cairns where this tragedy unfolded just before Christmas four years ago. Now, as you can see, the house has been demolished and in its place, eight trees have been planted as a memorial to the children who lost their lives. Those children include Malili Warrior, Vita Angelina Thide, Shante Warrior, LaTorrance Warrior, Azaria Willie, Daniel Willie, Rodney Willie and Patronella Willie. Together they are referred to as Kariba Omaske, meaning our children in the Arab Island dialect of the Torres Strait, the children's common heritage. Thousands are expected at the Cairns Cemetery on Saturday to honour their memory at a tombstone unveiling. A tombstone opening is a Torres Strait Islander tradition performed years after a funeral to unveil or open the headstone. The family will decorate the headstones which will be revealed to the community for the first time in a ceremony with traditional song and dance. NITV will be here across the weekend to bring you all the updates. Ella Archibald Binge, NITV News. The controversial Carmichael mine project in central Queensland is set to go ahead after Indian mining giant Adani said it will fund the entire operation. The announcement comes after environmental groups pressured banks in Australia and overseas not to lend money to the project. Construction could begin as early as this year. Noel Pearson is fighting to save his welfare trial on Cape York after the Queensland government announced the initiative is set to be reformed. Mr Pearson said he had been made sick to the stomach by the Deputy Premier Jackie Trad's announcement yesterday that his family, Centrepiece Family Responsibilities Commission would be folded into a new program called Thriving Communities. The late Dr G Yunupingu won four out of his eight nominations at the ARIA Awards overnight. He was awarded Male Artist of the Year, Best Independent Release, Best World Music Album and Best Cover Art. His daughter Jasmine accepted on his behalf. That's all for now. I'll be back with another update shortly. See you then.